It's Madden NFL 24, and it's brought to you by EA Sports. It's the New Orleans Saints and the Chicago Bears, and it's all up next. We've had a lake effect been sitting over Soldier Field since about 9 this morning, and it's not supposed to budge anytime soon. The good news, the foot of mind here in Chicago. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the New Orleans Saints taking on the Chicago Bears. Welcome again, one and all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brandon Gordon on hand alongside Charles Davis. And yes, the storyline here, the weather. Snow and more of it expected as this game continues. So how will that impact how this one goes? Can these teams ignore the distraction and the strangeness of playing in a snow game because it actually affects the crowd as well. That big roar you get is often muffled when there's a snow game. And the second part, what's the footwear you got on? Does that fit the turf you're playing on? And how will it handle as things get a little bit slick? set to get us started and off we go from soldier field now bush on the return and taken down just past the 20 at about the 21 yard line now we're going to get a stoppage it appears to be an injured bear on the field so as the medical staff takes a look we'll step aside He's now on first down. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. Now the first carry for Bush, and he'll be brought down here at the 28. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. They'll try and run for the first with Bush. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. The Saints going to send out Blake Gillikin to punt on fourth down here. On the return, Hester. They'll net only 35 here following a 43-yard boot, 8-yard return, and the Bears take over. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And a look at a guy, definitely got a little razzle-dazzle to him. Can do it with his arm or his legs. They're mobile QB. His ability to adjust on the fly is almost unmatched in the game right now because it leads to a couple of snaps per game we just sit back and ask yourself, how did he pull that off? Opponents can practice and prepare each and every week all they want, but this guy, he is hard to corral. On first down, McMahon, and that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. They always say the real estate is about location. Well, guess what, when it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. Here's second and ten. Now a handoff inside. It's Peyton. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. 
They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. To throw on third down. McMahon, he's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards to play. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man. -man. Maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Throwing on first down. McMahon. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up second down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Underneath, he's got Olsen. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. They set up the screen to Peyton. before he crosses over out of bounds. The Bears on the move. They've got another first down. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in the game. And the Bears are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the run. Well, when you're facing a receiver like this, you always come into a game thinking, we've got to put our best corner on him. We've got to find a way to get him off his route, limit his touches. But that plan, not working too well on this opening drive. That's already two catches for him, and this one, good for a first down. Peyton. No signal, and now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. To throw on second down. McMahon toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. So can this New Orleans defense stand tall again? Third and goal. Here's Peyton up the middle. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Bears will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. So both sides of the football contributing here early. Their defense forces the punt, and then the offense takes it down the field and punches it in on the short touchdown run. And Brandon, that's good complimentary football, and that's what they need if they want to get out of here victorious. Robbie Gold on for the extra point. Or these may be an adventure this afternoon, but this one is good. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. For the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. 
And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. <laughs> just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. And now they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> Throwing on first down is Breeze. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing now is Breeze. They'll set up the screen now to Camara. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. That's a nice design there, but sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. And he is caught. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we use the term pitch and catch a lot to denote an easy completion. We just saw one right there on third and three to pick up the first down. Why are those so tough to defend? Just because they hit so quickly? Yeah, it's all about timing and confidence. Quarterback sees it, rips it, there you go. Breeze now on first down. And he's got Shockey. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until stop it. Not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go all over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive, and here's one out of the running game. So the passing game, loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Thomas goes in motion left. And they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead a handoff up the middle. And he did not want to go down there as he carries tacklers for a solid gain of nine. Someone's looking fresh, and his old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block if you're an offensive lineman. Nice early burst, nice gain, too. Ball on the 27. Here's second down at a yard. Now Breeze. Oh, he's got him in wide open, complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And they'll send the slot in motion left. First and goal, Bush. Into the end zone, touchdown New Orleans. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Saints are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Sometimes you get a first and goal and you're back near the seven, eight, nine-yard line and you start thinking, maybe we'll run it here on first down to get half of what we need so maybe we can have two or three shots at going for it from closer range. So this is a bonus right here. What a great run to work his way into the end zone. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And we are tied at seven. Yeah. 
So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Hester going to decide against a return, and they will spot this at five. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent. Now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Now a give, it's Sayers between the tackles. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. First down for the Bears, a gain of 15. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. Oh, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. Oh, this one may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Demario Davis there on the stop. Second and nine. Looking to throw. McMahon. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Gets past one man. Midfield just a yard or two shy of the 40. Opted to run for it. The decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. So in Saints territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. Back to throw. McMahon. It's a short one here. Complete to the tight end. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. And from the 34, here's second and four. Looking to throw. McMahon. That's to Marshall on a quick slam. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On first and ten, McMahon. And his throw is incomplete. It sort of looks like they stopped some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. They'll try the right side here with Peyton. And there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Wide open receiver complete. And he's finally taken down, and it's a big game there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. 
7-7, our score after one. Back in Chicago, ready for the second quarter. It's the Bears in possession as they go to work on a first and goal. On the give, here comes Peyton. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. The 4-3 defense there did its job, funneled things right to the middle linebacker. If they do a nice job of playing team defense, everyone takes care of their responsibilities. That allows that guy in the middle to do his job, which is search and destroy. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, want two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. The Bears on third down, a perfect four for four thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Operating from the gun, McMahon to the goal line, but it's incomplete. So on fourth down, on comes Robbie Gold in the field goal unit for the Bears. This will be just a 21-yard attempt. The kick by Gold is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. Now it's gold after splitting the uprights to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. The New Orleans offense set to take over. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. They'll start on the ground with Bush. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you're scrambling a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Here is third down and four. Now Breeze. And that is incomplete. What I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only about one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. Blake Gillikin on to punt now on fourth down. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. 
it's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And he's got some space here. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school, and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I'd love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. And he'll go down shy of 40 at the 41. So the completion good for six yards. And it'll be second down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. Now a give, it's Peyton. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. On second down, here's the option. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. An excellent run of 22 yards on the keeper and also a first down. It looked like almost some miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball, but the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. Got his man and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Touchdown, as his guys are able to extend their lead. An out route there for the score, a quick out route there for the score. Yeah, you're not really surveying the defense on this one. You're just counting on timing, making this play happen. One, two, balls out of his hands. And where he's going, the outside. Touchdown. Now gold for the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. So the drive there took six plays, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And this not an easy situation. You're down early, in the elements, you're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. On first down, Breeze. He finds his man complete. It's Bush. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. 
Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. That would complete downfield to Thomas. And they get him to the ground quickly, but he's out near midfield at the 49-yard line. 23 yards to pick up there. Brandon, there have been some memorable snow games for championships in the NFL. 1948. Philadelphia Eagles, Chicago Cardinals. Well, the most famous one in my lifetime, I think, is got to be 01, right? Raiders, Patriots, just in the uh, Patriots to the had Super to go to, Bowl. You had the to go to the tuck roll, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one people remember. But I also know this in Miami, the infamous one, the snowplow game in New England when they went out there and, and the Patriots had a guy come out and clear a spot on the field for their field goal kicker to kick the game winner. Is that 82? That was 82. And the Dolphins fans will never forget it. Well, we're not seeing one of those famous games here, but it's fun to be in the snow nonetheless. From just across the midfield stripe, here's a second and seven. Well, again, they'll throw with Breeze. His throw incomplete. I oh, like the calmness of having played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. And this offense on third down today, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. Here's Breeze to throw. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. The defender serving him for getting out and leaking out of the backfield. There's a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage. And that throw had no shot. Here's Blake Gillikin now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? We said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well. And he's been right. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. It'll go as a gain of four at its second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Second and six. On the run, it's Peyton. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. They were looking for a little spark and some breathing room. They got it right there, a gain of 14 and a first down. A perfect example right there, Charles, of why they love this rookie runner. And think about how the NFL and the college games are meshing together more and more. You don't have to go to the NFL and learn a new set of skills. What you did in college often makes you ready for the NFL. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. Call it a gain of 14 for the second play in a row. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. In motion left here, Marshall. And he'll get an opportunity with it on the touch pass. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. 
They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Again, he'll drop to throw. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. Here comes the Bears punter now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. This will be fielded at the 17. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. New Orleans offense back out and ready to go. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? On first and 10, here's Breeze. Quick hitter here, it's complete. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. This second and four. From the gun, it's Breeze. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. First target, first catch, and a first down. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They run up the middle. Now the ball comes loose, and this is picked up by the Bears. And the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. We've got plenty of weather here today. We've got some snow going on, and they've come out of a dome. And there have been two ways of getting ready for this. Some have said, don't worry about the weather. Just practice in your normal conditions and handle it on game day. And others have said, find some weather, find some conditions somewhere, and try and get ready. What do you think? Well, whatever the preparation there, the snow causing the fumble. down and that will not rule the fumble and we've hit the two minute mark in this first half of action a reminder that when halftime rolls around Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of the half of play from our studios in Orlando they try to throw on second down and complete it's another zone defense it looks like it's open for possibilities but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion after an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. To throw, it's Breeze. Able to find the open man. that's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest at first, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Breeze now to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Now a second and ten. Now, Breeze again. That's to the left sideline and incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because any completions on first and second down, now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. If you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. To throw is Breeze. taken down but he does have first down yardage 
A gain of 32 that time. Uh, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there, that shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. On the delay, it's Bush. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Breeze now. Now he's got it. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Second and goal from the one. They'll run for it here with McAllister. And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Saints get a lick score here in the final minute of the first half. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead's down to a field goal at 17-14. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee, and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Bears going to get one more possession in this first half, and they may just be content to take this three-point lead and head into the locker room. seconds remain in this first half as they come up here first and ten. Throwing to start the drive. McMahon throwing middle and it's complete. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Final shot before break. McMahon. So we come upon halftime here at Soldier Field with the Bears out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, the coach, snow yeah, certainly making conditions difficult, and it's not likely to get better anytime soon. As we turn it right back so over to Brandon and Charles.
The lake effect snow set to continue for the second half of action as we are back underway. Now Hester will get a shot. Returnable here for Hester. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead. Now a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game as a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it, and in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up, not that time. Now a toss play for Peyton. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it, and that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Here comes the Bears punter now, standing just outside his own goal line. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Fielded at the 33. An eight-yard return there after a punt of 47. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs. But now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. Bree's going to throw. And this is incomplete. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now, hotly contested in the third quarter. Breeze. And his throw here is incomplete. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested, and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Breeze. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A nice pickup of 23 on the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down, and I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. A give left side, Bush. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. They'll keep it in the hands of Bush. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. 
Here's Breeze. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 12-yard line. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Breeze now on first down. Targeting Thomas on the out route, making the catch. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. From the four, it's second and a couple. Up the middle they go with McAllister. And he'll take it in for the Saints touchdown. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Saints have taken the lead here in this third quarter. So a very strong first drive in the second half, Charles, as they've turned that halftime deficit into a third quarter lead. And they were pretty purposeful there, weren't they? Measured in their approach. But boy, they executed awfully well moving the ball down the field. Extra point right down the middle. And that will make this a four-point game. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Looking to throw on second down. McMahon throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. You know they wanted, you know they expected. They needed him to be sharp coming out after the half. Unfortunately, he's missed his first three throws. I wonder if he got out late and missed his warm-up time. The whole team did come out a little bit later than usual. I don't know, maybe there's something to that. It must have been a heck of a halftime speech. They have maybe just trying to rally the troops back from this deficit. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Well, the other day they told us when well, we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Fielded just inside the 20. So a change of possession here on the punt. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They're rocking and rolling, but the scoreboard doesn't show a big difference. You know, maybe it's one of those games where coaches say you can't miss your turn on offense. I like the way you phrased it, especially with that. I love that rocking and rolling because the explosions on offense are happening. So that's going to get the crowd going. They're loving that. But defensively, they just can't get it together to get the stops they've needed in order to help increase their margin. They've got to find a way, but you're not counting on it. That's exactly what you said. Can't miss your turn, can't miss your opportunity. Yeah, they're going for another opportunity now. Yeah, quick throw here, that's complete. 
And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. When you decide to run a hitch route, it really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Throwing now is Breeze. This to Graham on the short pass. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. They'll try the right side with Bush. Gets around him. Yeah, able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. 65 yards rushing for him now to this point. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. And he'll be brought down, it looks like right at the 40. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. They'll go again with Bush. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Now they'll throw with Breeze. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down. Throw a fastball. When that wasn't necessary, incomplete pass. When are these quarterbacks going to learn? You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. And that is no good. And this will stay a four-point game. And any time you see a kicker trot out to try one from 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through, and that one winds up no good. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. On the draw, here's Peyton. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And he's taken down inside the 30. Defense was expecting run, and they're dealt a pass of over 15 yards. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, 
and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. To throw on second down, McMahon. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. McMahon. That is incomplete. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw, unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. The kick by Gold is good, and that'll bring him back within a point. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter. Look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. Now it's gold after splitting the uprights to kick this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. A pretty big opening there on first down. Eight yards up to the 33. What a way to start a drive. An excellent run, a tone setter, and now if you want to take a shot on second down and go play action and make it look like the same exact play and throw it over the top, you can do so because you've established the run in a big way. Bush trying the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 94 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. They'll run it with Bush. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. From the 48-yard line, here's the second and eight. Now Breeze. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. I know for us it's fun, and it's not so much fun for the rookie receivers when we see them coming into the league and we're good training camps. You see them working on getting two feet down instead of one. But the best ones train in college trying to get two down instead of one, so the transition's a little bit less. In this case, though, when they were completed anyway. And this won't be enough. A good, secure tackle, and they stop him a few yards shy at the 46. The screen good for six, but it's not enough as it leads to a fourth down. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage. It should be an impactful play because if you can get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves, that they might get hit with a screen, 
Maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. The Chicago offense set to get started. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Throwing to start the drive. McMahon. Looking left side, and it's complete. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. I love that play, because in the snow, you think run, run, run. Big passing play there. And defenders hate it, especially in open space, because trying to come under control, break down, and make a tackle in the open field, difficult normal conditions. In these conditions, almost impossible. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and ten, and he maneuvers up the middle for three, and it's second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver, but he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front, so if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Looking to throw on second down. McMahon. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. It's a loss of a yard, so they'll wind up crediting him with a sack, and it brings up third down. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Bears on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This is third and eight. Looking to throw, McMahon. And that is incomplete. Credit the secondary, credit the defensive game plan. They've been in his hip pocket all game long. They understood coming in that he was a big time receiver. Here comes the Bears punter now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. How does the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here? No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Breeze now on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That was a good play, an incompletion that feels like a disappointment. The ball was tipped in the air, a chance for an interception, and you can just feel the home crowd coming together thinking, this is the big play we've been looking for, and when it falls to the ground, a little bit of disappointment, even though it was a good play. Breeze again here on second and 10. And he's got Shockey. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. That coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Play action, Breeze. the Saints punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt and the Bears take over. Hey, hey, hey. 
throwing to start the drive. McMahon, and that throw behind his man. He missed him, incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Here's Peyton up the middle. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. 69 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, he'll take that every single time. This now a third and four. Back to throw. McMahon. Oh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. The New Orleans offense set to take over. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Well, on play action. Now Breeze. And he finds his tight end Graham. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. That's a good looking play to me. The big tight end on a crossing route coming underneath. Sometimes he can gain some serious momentum going forward, can he? Yeah, he can indeed and pretty well executed there. Here's third and six. Here's Breeze to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A big play that time on the catch and run. 35 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. This to Graham on the short pass. He's got room to roam. And he gets it all the way down to the three. A big play there on the catch and run. 31 yards. This defense is definitely reeling a little bit now. Back-to-back -back big plays given up. And you know what's all defenses talk about. How do you limit that? Instead, they got hit by a one-two punch those last couple of plays, and now they've got their backs to the goal line. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Trying to punch it across with Bush. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. A great play there with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Saints are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. Well, this offensive line has really stepped up to the challenge here because those Mastodons, they've been sensational clearing holes all game long. And this is great work down here near the goal line to give their back the space he needs to work his way into the end zone. Extra point splits the uprights, and that will ensure that it will take a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie it.
The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. Taken at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. There's still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. Just a one-possession game, down eight. They'll be looking for the touchdown and two-point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. On first down, McMahon. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that will bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. To throw on second down, McMahon. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Looking to throw. McMahon, a quick throw there is incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll look to throw again. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Marshall. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. And that's a much-needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Of course the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? He's able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Again, he'll drop to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and that's going to bring up second down. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. A great effort there. 36 yards. And the Bears have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed, and in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. So what can the Bears do here is they'll go for two. They'll look to throw. 
Tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. And a failure to convert and tie the game. Now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And they've seen their lead nearly extinguished after that last score. But bottom line, they are still on top with the football. And a touchdown on this drive would really put them in position A. counter it's Bush and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage that's going to go as a loss of four and it'll be second down that was well played there defensively two tight ends in the formation which essentially gave them seven blockers up front hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through but that's exactly what happened a loss resulted Breeze to throw on second down Quick hitter here, it's complete. So pass interference, the call, and that does not look to be going over too well on the defensive side. Or on their sideline, because I believe their head coach is saying right now, hey, you've got to call that both ways. They'll run up the middle with McAllister. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. They'll break the huddle. Come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. They'll hand it off to Bush. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 103 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Breeze now to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. The improv act, they're good for nine. And now they'll be looking at a third and short. Third and one. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions. But eventually, his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it. And he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. In motion right, one of the tight ends. On third down, they'll run it with McAllister. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I, I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. And yeah, they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. It's spotted at the 14-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth-quarter lead. 
this was Kenzo. Throwing on first down. McMahon, quick throw. That's complete on the inside slam. Give him nine there on the first down completion. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Looking to throw on second down. McMahon looking left side of his got a man. That's Marshall. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Now a handoff inside, it's Payton. And this will be a Bears first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. On first and 10, McMahon. Gets this one to Morris. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Two minutes remain, and that's our score differential as well. Two points here in the fourth quarter. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Now he'll try to run with this. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. The Charles are trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. Here's first and ten. They'll try the right side here with Peyton. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. Here's second down. Now again, it's Peyton. And he's taken down, and that'll get him a little bit closer. Every yard at this point will help your field goal kicker out. Well, the elements, the crowd, the situation, this is NFL football at its best. Here's third down. Now again, it's Sanders between the tackles. And they'll get to him short of the first down at about the 16. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This for the lead in the final stages. And the now 40-year-old veteran able to put this one through. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post-game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. Now it's gold after splitting the uprights to kick this one away. 
And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. So all eyes on the Saints offense. Down 29-28. A little over 80 ticks to go. Now their lead is evaporated, but they still have a shot on first down. They'll set up the screen now to Kamara. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So an ideal set of circumstances there. They move the chains, and they save that final timeout. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive linemen. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. That's exactly what they were looking for. If they get another gain like that, they'll be right there in field goal range. And the tension building. Final minute, one timeout remaining. First and 10. To throw is Breeze. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Under 50 seconds to play. Here's second and 10. Breeze to throw. will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. Thankfully for the offense, a fortuitous bounce there on the fumble goes out of bounds because they're down here in the red zone. You don't want to lose one there. You don't want to lose one, and the best part, because it went out of bounds, they retain possession, still have an opportunity to put points on the board. And I believe the referee's been buzzed. Yeah, they want to take another look at this call, and it's certainly a big one here late in a tight game. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. They'll come up first and ten here. They run up the middle of Bush. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Now first and goal. They'll run for it here with McAllister. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. This is Bush, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Well, they would have loved to have scored a touchdown there, but this still sets him up for a game-winning field goal attempt. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game.
So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to almost certainly win the football game. And his kick here is good. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. Nothing easy about that one in these elements in the snow, but he's able to put it home in what looks to be the game winner. <laughs> and you know, I had problems with the footing just walking from the bus to the stadium. <laughs> I can't imagine being called to kick in this stuff with the game on the line. But he appeared to have zero issues whatsoever. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. Now Hester will get a shot. Returnable here for Hester. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. This is first and 10. They'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Here comes second down. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Flush to his right. And he'll be taken down here. And that is how this one is going to come to an end. Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner. Although on that last play, they were so backed up, it would have taken a miracle, and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it, because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play, and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded, because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. Perhaps next time. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say so long from Soldier Field.